Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. This show, Dare to Dream, has been nominated and is a finalist for a People's Podcast Choice Award. And I'm thrilled. I get to hear within the next 10 days our status. This was something that was an intention of mine coming into this year. One of the things I wanted to create it. And the show, it's just ready. It's been around for 12 years. So we won a lot of awards when we first came out and then podcasts started bursting out. Did you know that there's 706,000 podcasts right now? And I'm saying this right now and next week, there's going to be a lot more. Every week, 3,000 new podcasts roll out. Don't worry about it because most of them don't last. They close, a lot of them close very quickly because people get into it and don't realize it's work. <laughs> it actually takes work. But the ones that do stick around and last, it's, I think for most of us, it's because it's in our wheelhouse. It's in our DNA. And besides that, we love this format and it is a masterclass where we get to connect with those on our bucket list. It is the level of conversation that is life-changing. So I'm so glad you joined. Thank you for voting for this show. And I recommend that you tell others about it. Go ahead, please subscribe. So easy, it'll pop into your inbox every week. Just click on subscribe. And if you have 30 seconds, leave a five-star review so other people who enjoy this conversation will find us as well. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane Heer and Access Consciousness. They do healing work throughout the entire world, so you can find them in any country. And go to Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R.com, as well as accessconsciousness.com. They've got tons of products and books and classes that you can enjoy. A little bit later, and not too much later, I've got a, gosh, a beloved past guest of mine and someone that thankfully I've been able to get to know through her workshop, Dr. Sue Mortar is here to blow our minds. <laughs> and I think I can make that claim because she certainly does mine every time I've been graced enough to spend time with her. She's an international speaker. She's a master of bioenergetic medicine and quantum field visionary. And who am I out in the world? Well, I am a media visibility authority. I have mm, such a good fortune to teach spiritual entrepreneurs how to write their book and make it into a page turner. I've also got a company that guarantees the author's book is taken to international bestseller. And finally, I teach the ultimate visibility formula so I can show people what I also do out in the world. I've been interviewed on over 1,000 media outlets and I use this to propel me to speak and write and do workshops, and you can too. So you can join the Ultimate Visibility Formula by going to Debbie D, D E B B I D, dot net slash visibility. And that's where I teach you how to be interviewed on radio and podcast in 60 days or less and, and get results. So, yes, I love the people who come to my classes working with healers and those who have a divine mission. How does it get any better than that? So you can also go to debbiedashinger.com and get your free report on what your message is out into the world. So my question to you is, do you know how to redirect the flow of energy patterns in your body to activate your full potential? My guest today is Dr. Sue Mortar, and she's got globally taught energy court codes coursework that teaches individuals how to clear subconscious memory blockages. She's the co-creator of the bioenergetic synchronization technique and founder of the Mortar Institute for Bioenergetics using self-healing techniques and quantum science for a new approach to life. Dr. Sue is author of the book, the Energy Codes, the seven-step system to awaken your spirit, heal your body, and live your best life. This book is wonderful. I highly recommend it. I've already had several of my friends and my boyfriend buy it. I recommend you do as well. Very worth it. She is a renowned international speaker and the host of the Gaia TV show, Healing Matrix. Dr. Sue has been featured in several documentary films, including The Opus, The Cure Is, Discover the Gift, and Femme, and is the author of The Free. For you guys, take note of this, because this is very limited time ebook. You can get your free ebook 
called the top three mistakes that keep you from fulfillment and flow. Go to drsuemorter.com slash dare to dream. drsuemorter.com slash dare to dream. And Dr. Sue, welcome back to Dare to Dream. Thank you so much, Debbie. It is just delightful to hear you go on about everything that you're doing in the world. It, it's, it's just fantastic. Thank you so much for all of your outreach and all of your support to people who are wanting to connect their message with other people that are seeking support in some way. So it's a beautiful, beautiful connection. And I'm thrilled to be here again with you. We had such a fabulous time the last time that we interviewed together. So I'm looking forward to where we get to go today. We had such a fabulous time when we were together that I then booked your workshop and I flew to Indiana. And what was amazing to me, Dr. Sue, I knew you were amazing having that conversation. So I was excited to be with you. I was fully in. I had no idea that you were going to be even beyond that. So I want people to know that you've got this plethora of workshops and you have all these different systems that you teach everything from hands-on to experiential. There were healings in that class. That was crazy. There were people who came in like basically crippled in a lot of pain and they left walking. Their energy was different. They were healed. I mean, yeah. that was quite an experience. <laughs> it happens all the time. And you know, all we're doing is just getting things out of the way. That's supposed to be happening with everyone all the time. We're supposed to be self-healing, uplifting our energies, uh, being able to be more confident in the world and, and more intimate in our relationships and free in our lives. And we've just created a bunch of blockages along the way that, that are keeping us from having that experience. And so once we start tapping that and removing it, uh, things change for people dramatically. Yeah, because so, yeah, that's one of the things you talk about is that actually healing is natural. The body is a system that's made to heal. So can you talk a little bit more about that? Because there are so many people in chronic fill in the blank who have, you know, everything from serious back issues to knee issues to diabetes to et cetera. How is our system actually this regenerative machine? It is constantly replenishing and rejuvenating. And if it's allowed to do what it's built to do, it's going to heal anything in a pattern of either three days or seven days or 21 days. It runs in cycles. And so if three days pass and something isn't being alleviated uh, and seven days pass and it isn't being alleviated, then the chances are that it will be in 21 days. And if it's not, then we've gotten stuck and locked into a pattern where a trap door between different areas of our nervous system kind of slams shut. And so if the last message that it got through before that trap door slammed shut was, I'm under attack, emergency, I'm under a high stressful situation, and then the door slammed shut, the last message that the body got was, we're not okay, we're not safe. So the body then continues to build uh, chemicals to fight the bear, to run from the bear, to do whatever it's supposed to do to survive. It gets locked into a survivorship and doesn't return to its natural state of healing and filtering and cleansing and rejuvenating and replenishing, etc. Also in that state of healing, we're also creative and we're in our genius and we're able to come up with different ways of looking at life. We're able to see the solution in situations rather than thinking that it has you know, uh, a stronghold on us. And so the system is designed to be in this flow all the time. But if this trap door slams shut, then the information that gets locked in the subconscious is we are not okay. And so it starts validating the fact that we're not okay. The, the system starts looking out to see what is the problem. And the next thing you know, we're blaming this person and that situation and we're seeing the negativity in this circumstance and we're projecting the worst case scenario in our lives all the time, all because there's this subconscious search for what is the problem? All I know is that I'm getting a message that there is a problem. What is it? So the mind is constantly searching to name it, to label it, to find it. And the fact that it's constantly looking for the problem, it continues to generate new problems. It continues to generate more obstacles. And so we get stuck in a cycle. 
And the next thing you know, every moment that we're spending in fight or flight survival mode is a moment that we're not spending in healing, regenerative, replenishing mode. So days go by and we're not healing things. We're just status quo. Enough of those days go by and we end up in pain patterns, lack of digestion, increased toxicity, um, inflammation in the body, sleepless nights, headaches, asthma, allergies. All of this is a byproduct of energy getting blocked that was supposed to be flowing and now we're you know, experiencing the ramifications of that. So all we have to do is learn how to open that trap door so that the communication between our conscious decision to be happy, to be well, to be okay, connects with our subconscious nervous system, which is what runs our body and delivers that okayness. They have to be talking to each other. Open that trap door slammed shut. There's no communication between the two. And we're left, you know, stymied in a, like a broken record, just, Continue. I guess I'm showing my age with a broken record, um, uh, with, with anything that's uh, skipping, a CD that's skipping, and continuing to play the same line of the song over and over again uh, without you know, moving forward. It makes me remember when I was at your workshop, you shared with us, you have never taken hormones. Like you just didn't have an issue and you, you made a very clear choice. Can you talk about that? Why? How? I don't know if I can make it without them, to be honest with you. <laughs> so I'm fascinated by how your body regenerated and refreshed because you look, you know, you're beautiful, you're full of life. I would never know that. Oh, well, thank you, my dear. Um, I've never taken uh, an antibiotic. I've never taken a prescription drug of any kind in order to heal some ailment or to try to prevent something. I was raised in an environment where the entire focus was bioenergetics, meaning keeping the energy of the body flowing so that it can do its replenishing and rejuvenating, etc. When that trap door slams shut, what happens is we start producing chemicals of anxiety, chemicals of fight or flight, chemicals of rise to the occasion and deal with this. So cortisol levels go up. Our hormonal system gets, gets involved this way. Our adrenals get exhausted because we're not designed to be running from a bear 24 hours a day. We are going to exhaust our adrenal glands if, if that's the message that the system is continuing to get because the door slammed shut and the last message that got through was emergency. So the adrenals are going to exhaust. When they exhaust, they're like laying out on their back, you know, white flag waving, and the thyroid steps up and basically says, okay, it's not really my job, but I'm happy to help if we need this temporarily. So the thyroid now starts providing the energy for our system to fight the bear, which just is an imaginary bear. It's not really there, or maybe it is there or was there, but the body is reacting to it as if it's the only thing that's happening in our lives. And so... The thyroid isn't built to do that for an extended period of time, and it's going to exhaust. When it exhausts, we start on this roller coaster ride in our entire hormonal system, robbing Peter to pay Paul to try to figure out how to keep enough energy up to survive this attack that we perceive that we're under. And so we deplete prematurely. And when we deplete prematurely, as well as we don't digest and, and receive and absorb the nutrients from the foods that we're eating, because when we're stuck in fight or flight, the digestive system is shutting down. It's not operating at its optimum because under a true attack, all of our energy goes into our arms and legs so that we can run and fight. And it goes away from our digestive organs. So all of this rearrangement of our energy and an overuse of some aspects of our system and an understimulation of other aspects of our system lands us in a state where we start looking for help. So we go to the doctor, the doctor prescribes something and says, well, you don't have enough you know, adrenaline. So it puts you on uh, you know, a medication to, to, um, to compensate for the fact that your body isn't creating that for itself. Or you're given a thyroid medication because your thyroid isn't working, but it's only because it's exhausted it's not that it's, you know, um, incapable, it's just exhausted. So we have to stop that runaway train. And it's not that hard to do. 
We just have to get the trap door open so that the signals start sorting themselves out again and the body gets the message, oh, the bear is actually gone. That means we can stop tapping the adrenal glands. Now they have a chance to rest. That stops making the thyroid show up to do the adrenal's job, so it's going to recover and things start to begin to turn around if we know how to do that. And we can all learn how to do that. And that's what I'm teaching people to do in the workshops that I teach is, is getting their system open again so that flow can happen, fulfillment, healing, um, and, and the generation of the creative self rather than the survival self can step into motion the way that we're designed to be living in the first place. This is so fascinating because I live in a world that basically says that, yes, over the age of 40, it's very prevalent that people, often women, will go on thyroid medication. Yeah. It's just a fact of life. And I hear you saying something completely different. Yes. And so you're saying that even for somebody, and I have been on thyroid medication for a long time, that this is something that can be reversed that one can actually get off of this and make a healing there? We so often are finding that people are having to readjust the medications that they're already on. As their body starts operating on its own, the medications that were in place are now elevating our, our chemistries into a place that they don't belong. So they have to decrease the medication as the natural function of the body is increasing so that we're not pushing ourselves into a status that is hyperthyroid, over-functioning, you know, an over-generation uh, of the thyroid chemicals in the body. So, so we're, we're reaching that balance again when the body's own vitality gets to be restored. So it's a regenerative approach to getting the body functioning the way that it's supposed to be functioning, thereby needing less help from the outer support of the prescription medications that so many of us have been on. And it's perfectly, it's very interesting that the, um, excuse me, it's very interesting <clears throat> that the, the uh, tendency for women to need to get on a medication at a certain age is oftentimes associated with their own creativity uh, being utilized differently. <clears throat> excuse me. The... Uh, I've been on airplanes every day for I don't know how long, for every week, for for months on end uh, since the release of the book, and so I'm I'm going full steam ahead myself. Um, so I have a little dry throat just from my last airplane ride. Um, so <clears throat> as as women are moving out of the age of raising their kids and you know tending to the home in a particular way when families have been the cultural focus for, for the woman, if that were the case in her life, um, what happens is that creative energy doesn't really know where to go. It was being utilized um, for the raising of the kids, helping with the homework, making sure, always thinking about taking care and all of that. And as that need is, is decreasing, as the kids are growing up and moving off to college, et cetera, <clears throat> excuse me, that creative energy has to be routed differently. And if it isn't, then what ends up happening is we, we become overstimulated. That, excuse me, <clears throat> that generates um, so much of a stress on the balance between the adrenal glands, etc., that it ends up showing up as a need for medication that's actually only temporary. Sorry about this. This is a very, you know, first of all, don't worry about it and take whatever time you need. So this is very interesting because anyone who watches my show knows, knows that I've had coughing fits uh, <laughs> a couple of times. And um, so it's, you know, it happens yeah. uh, when we're in visual and audio medium all at once. So, yeah. okay, this is amazing to me. Oh, gosh. So uh, there's so many places I can go, but this is really what like this is good news <laughs> this is really good news so you've got something called the bioenergy basics this is a system that's designed to heal and um i have this quote from a woman by the name of uh rachel naomi remen which is and i'd like you to weigh in on this yeah. healing healing may not be so much about getting better as about letting go of everything that isn't you all of the expectations all of the beliefs and becoming 
who you are. That seems to me very Michelangelo, you know, the David coming in and chipping away all those things that aren't mm. yes. and allowing what is actually there to come forward. Is that your understanding also about healing? I completely agree with that. The, you know, the challenge that people have is they is twofold. Number one, most of those interferences that need to be chipped away, those beliefs that are running our lives or those um, perceptions of self that are incorrect, that are keeping us compromised in some way, are subconscious. They're below the level of someone's awareness. And so a, an individual has a difficult time letting go of the parts of me that aren't true when I can't find exactly what they are. I can't really put my finger on it. And so this is the beauty of the work that, that I was born into and have carried on. My father was a pioneer in energy medicine and I've, I've developed that further through my own life-changing experiences through meditation, which opened my consciousness to a very high level. And so I was able to perceive additional things that we could add to that, to that beautiful mix of of tools that he developed in the course of his lifetime for helping the subconscious to become conscious, to, for someone to become aware of the things that are below that trap door that are stuck in there driving our lives. Because the nature of our system is for this trap door to be constantly reopening and reopening and reopening. But some of the issues that, that we experience that slammed it shut, kind of locked it in place. And so the natural uprising of our own wisdom and our own true self doesn't get to happen as easily as it could. So if that natural uprising of our true self were allowed to happen, we would naturally be letting go, shedding these parts of us that are not the true self. They're not who we really are. And yet, if this trap door is locked down, that attempt is, is, is there but, but the process and the flow and the ease and the grace with which that's supposed to take place isn't happening. So the work that I do enhances the ease and the flow and the graceful process of letting go of the parts of us that aren't the true self, the parts of us that we concluded early on that were true about us that aren't true about us, the parts of us that we concluded early on that include things like, I'm not enough, it's something I should withhold. There's something wrong with me carrying shame or this shroud of guilt in some way that keeps us bogged into a reality that isn't the truth, but it might as well be because it's the experience that we're having. All because of certain things that are locked in place underneath that trap door. So the trap door has to come open in order for this graceful healing definition to be applicable in every single person on this planet, the trap door just has to open. Our culture doesn't live in a way that it naturally enhances the opening of that trap door, even if we have sealed it shut with some pretty strong conclusions about ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, the indigenous peoples work and lived in collaboration with nature, with the seasons, with the elements. They were in touch with a vibration, with a frequency. They gave honor and homage to the inner world, the wisdom that was rising. They were constantly cultivating that and sharing it with each other. There was so much value in speaking your truth into the tribe that the tribe considered it an insult if you didn't because the tribe would be compromised if you didn't speak your truth. So everyone had a voice and everyone was holding sacred space for each other. That creates a different environment when it comes to shedding the parts of you that are not true. You know, in that kind of environment, it becomes obvious, but our culture doesn't live that way. Our culture is pedal to the metal, go make it happen, compare yourself to everyone else, get in shape only because you don't look as good as the next person, go do this because it's what you're supposed to do by the time you're 40 or by the time you're 50, you better have this in place. It's so externally oriented that we don't have a clue who we are. We can't feel our truth if it's pounding on our chest. We think we need to take something so that we don't feel that pounding. And all the while we're getting further and further from the true healer within. You, so going internal, I know there are things that you talk about regarding feelings. And 
I, w- I would love you to just share a little bit your take on feelings, the importance, how they can be expressed, how if they're energy, they can be released so that there's actually some kind of you know positive outcome from having felt it and expressed it. You bet. You know, Debbie, the number one reason that this trap door slams shut is because there is a feeling that we are so afraid to feel that we will abandon ourselves and everything else in order to not feel it. And the moment that we do that, we jump outside of our true selves and we start living in a false self, a compromised self that writes stories about how how important it is that we be accepted and that we achieve and that we outrun our fears, etc. We do so many things just to keep from feeling a certain feeling. And what I'm teaching people is that not only is feeling that feeling important, it's imperative. If you ever want to be self-healing and be rejuvenating and becoming younger every year, you have to allow yourself the opportunity to have the whole you be here and not be you know, uh, cluttered over or cloaked or thrown under the bus or left behind because it just was too intimidating. Now, when you're four years old, you don't know how to handle those kinds of things that are happening. When you're three and four and five and six and eight and 10, you don't know what to do. So you just start making do and you decide to be this way because that's what works or think this way or act this way because that's what everybody around you is doing. When all the while you're living in a story land, you're not living in your true self. And in that true self, you have the power to transmute and transform anything. We have to learn how to do that. We have to learn how to get into back to the true self instead of living out here in this world where we make everything work because that's what we do and we broad shoulders and we can muscle our way through and survive. And it's just not what we're supposed to be doing. So I'm teaching people to learn to live underneath the story, underneath that tendency to shoot out there and go get safe and go prove yourself in some way, to drop in and start feeling who you really are, feeling it with your breath and and building neurocircuitry to have a different perception of self that resides deep in here in your power center and your wisdom center and your creative center rather than up here in your survivor fight or flight self. And so um, I'm teaching people how to get underneath that mind that's constantly writing stories to try to figure it out and put everything in its place and categorize things and measure, strategize. And so if we think about this mind as this ceiling fan that's spinning so fast, it, it's like this, it's just, whoa, it's constantly writing and figuring it out. And the truth of you is totally different than that. The truth of you is this beautiful essence that's rising and it's wisdom and it's power and it's right here, right in the moment. You know what to do and you're there to do it and you're paying attention and you care about yourself and others and it works. But this and this are two different radio stations. And if this ceiling fan was spinning so fast, you would never stick your finger through that because it'd get cut off, right? So we have to learn how to slow this mind down. You have to learn how to slow it down and get it in tandem with the true self so that we can work our way through that and start to experience ourselves beyond the beliefs that this mind is chewing on all the time and validating and proving and, and you know, protecting and doing all defending and all these things that it does. Is when we're locked underneath that, we're trapped in a box under here. And that box is miserable. It's familiar, but it's miserable. And so what we have to do is slow that mind down so that we can experience an adventurous, free version of ourselves that's creative, that has answers, that is the one that's in charge instead of driving down the road thinking about how am I going to react to this better and how am I going to do this when they do that and what should I do and to strategize in that situation. Instead of wasting our time doing that, it's like instantly we realize, oh, wait a second. I've just been spending my energy, my valuable, rare, beautiful energy, I've been spending it on responding probably to people I don't even really respect or trying to be included in something I don't even really want to be a part of or whatever, right? Instead, I'm just going to flip this whole thing over. I call it the quantum flip. 
it's an entire flip of your reality where you recognize, oh, wait a second, this whole thing is my creation. Mm. I can have it be however I want it to be, whatever perspective I put on it. I'm the creator of my own life experience. I don't have to be a better reactor or a better responder. I need to learn to be a creator, but we haven't been encouraged to, to live that way. And it starts with learning to feel our own feelings so that we can use that energy in a creative fashion rather than a reactive fashion of trying to get away from some feeling we're so afraid to feel. Oh, I am so moved by that. Yeah. I feel like you just put the power right back to each of us. And I feel like this conversation when you talk about the story and the rejection of the feeling is actually a disempowerment, right? Because it's all about what's out there, whether we are actually really caring about the other person so much or not, but we make all this so significant. And my God, it's all well, the minutia is exhausting. But instead, you know, to come back to self and remember it is our story, it's our life, it's our choice. And from that, wow, I can just feel from what you said how much is possible. Yes. The, the soulful self, the essential true self, has all the power in the universe. In fact, it's made of the universe. Mm. It, to, to get to physical form, all we do is compress cosmic universal energy. We compress that energy and it creates physical form. So the chair that someone's sitting in, the car that someone's driving, um, the, the bed that you'll lay down in tonight, it's just energy packed together. It's packed together so much you can walk on it. You can live inside of it, this body. It's all just packed together energy. And so when we start to understand that, we can start to work with the energies of our lives and collaborate with them rather than combat against some wall that we think is in our way. That truly what's happening here is we're learning to realize that we're made of the cosmos. There's nothing that we do not have access to. There are, <clears throat> there are 11 billion bits of information in the form of little energy packages bombarding our system every millisecond. That's a lot. What that translates to is there's cosmic light, there's information, there's loving support, there's divine guidance, however you want to look at it, it's all the same thing. And you're, you are that. You are that energy coming into form and you're recycling and recycling and recycling yourself in a particular fashion that is just the nature of bioenergetics, human bioenergetics. And in that, you are constantly gathering more of that cosmic energy and utilizing it and gathering more and utilizing it or not. It's just a question of knowing that, allowing it to be true for you too, and allowing the power of the universe to be on your side instead of something that you're battling against all the time. It's so crazy that we have it backwards. We have it exactly backwards. We say things like in this romantic way, it's you and me against the world. And actually, no, it's you and me as the world. We are the same energy that's exchanging all the time. We're not supposed to be a separate self. You know, mythology, uh, philosophy, the, the sacred sciences of, of the Vedas and the oldest written texts that exist, they all tell us that the number one problem with our evolution, with our vitality, and with living the life that we want to be living is that we consider ourselves to be separate, a separate self, a false separate self that has to survive against the elements, against the world. And, and yet we don't listen. For thousands of years, we've been being told that. It's written in the hieroglyphs in Egypt. It's everywhere telling us this is you. It's not against you. It is you. It's on, for the, and at the very least, we should allow it to be on our team. We should allow it to be in our favor, but we don't even do that. We don't even do that. We think that something happens in our lives and it was the worst thing that could have possibly happened. And what I know 
from my own personal experience, from my elevated consciousness experiences in meditation and beyond the multidimensionality experiences that I have on a regular basis, as well as from the thousands of people that I've been working with for the last four, three decades, seriously, in this particular conversation, um, I know that there is only ever one thing happening, that, that, and it is this, that everything is in your favor. And your job is to figure out how it's supporting you. If you would do that with your mind instead of use your mind to fight against it and to make it wrong, you would embrace the fact that the universe is here to support you always, only, ever. No matter what it is, you lose a job, it's because that job was never going to let you be who you're supposed to be. Somebody breaks up with you, it should be, thank God, apparently. Well, how do I know? Because you did. And I know that everything that's happening is in my favor. So apparently I was never going to be happy with you. And it actually feels kind of good a few months later when we realize I was really overworking to have that relationship work. So I need to learn how to accept that I could have a relationship that I don't have to overwork in uh, and figure out who that person is in here, the real me. And then I'll attract a relationship that actually is co-supportive and beautiful and enhancing to my life instead of exhausting to me. But, you know, if four months later we're going to feel better about what happens and we're actually going to see the gift in it, then my question to everyone is, why not look at it that way now? If eventually you're going to look back and say, you know, as hard as that was, it was the best thing that ever happened in my life. It may take us 15 years to figure that out. So what I'm doing is showing people how to drop into real time collapse time and allow that disposition to be your authentic come from now so that you don't have to waste the 15 years with that begrudged energy mm -hmm. keeping you from having the life experience that you want to have from a health standpoint from a relational standpoint from an abundance and a success standpoint all of it it's all the same thing mama mia nah. <laughs> we're crazy we're crazy we are crazy people and we need to stop being crazy. We need to just accept that there is a sanity that we don't have any idea about that is just begging for our attention to participate with it. And it's, it's universal love. It's this universal guidance that is, that is what is. But we've been scurrying around thinking something totally different than that. And we suffer a lot because of it. Yes, it's so true. People individually in the planet as well, without a doubt. Very profound. So the universe is for you. It's conspiring for you. The force is with you. <laughs> it's with you. It is with you. All you have to do is let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Okay. Well, what would that look like? Let's find out. Take an action. Take a take a baby step risk. Open your heart. When when you could win an argument, decide not to. Decide to just love them instead. Who cares? Because if you get if you get obsessed with winning, you're going to have to have another one and another one and another one because your identity is going to be built on winning the arguments. So you have to have arguments in order to know who you are. It's like, stop that. Stop it. Just, just sit down and love them and see what happens. Listen and love and support and agree. And the, when you do that, the other person starts to sit down and open up and listen to you. It's, but we just have to be willing to lead. So that's what I mean when, when we start operating from a creative standpoint, we're capable of leading. We're capable of finding ways to unpack these situations in our lives that are creating so much misery. Now, you might be in situations that are really tough. You might be in an abusive situation. You might be in a, you know, stuck in big lockdown here. And so what I'm saying right now might seem completely impossible. Like she doesn't know about my life. And, and I have to tell you that, that while I was raised in an amazing quantum science discussing environment, um, <clears throat> where I was raised to be in this natural self-healing world, I was also in a world where there was abuse in my, in my extended family, and there was abandonment feelings in my personal experience of life, and, and it, what, I was shut down. I slept on the floor of my closet when I was growing up. I was that intimidated about life. And... What I know is that we can, we can not only overcome or transcend those things, we can use those things to our advantage, and we're supposed to be. <clears throat> that what I realize is that I know more about who I am 
because of those circumstances than I ever would have known had I not experienced them. Excuse yeah, me. so powerful. In your book, um, <laughs> I have this on the right page. I know it's page 59 because I committed it to memory, but it's about truth number five. The purpose of your life is to discover your creatorship. And there's a story in here about someone um, named Ellie who has a great shift in understanding. And she realizes uh, at some point that her difficult life circumstances and the challenges she faced was about finding her own true voice. I was just like, this is my story. Um, it was so profound. I had to actually <laughs> copy it and, and uh, put it somewhere because, yeah, this is a lot of what I try to convey when I explain to people, first, why I do what I do, and second, I understand. Like, I know what it's like to be there because I have been. And it's, it's very interesting. I feel so much in a process of almost like a... Time has slowed down in a couple of ways. First with feelings, because I, am a, I have a real heightened awareness. It's a rather hilarious for an incredibly sensitive being. God, I'm sensitive. At the same time, I came to recognize several years ago, feeling, project, work. Feeling, throw myself into something. And time slowed down and I thought, oh, no. that's not healthy disappointment. I have, you know, two hours ahead of me on the computer and I realize I don't know how to just breathe and be with. So that's a new practice. And part of that and part of what you're saying and what I got from you a lot in Indiana is, um, you know, I'm a mom with Alzheimer's and, and that's interesting. <laughs> that's good times. And she's, notoriously well she's a narcissist she's a difficult character and in the midst of all this there's a softening interestingly enough to who she is that's actually nice and at the same time her uh, sh sharpness wickedness comes out and it happened the other night i took her out for her birthday and there was she and i and my boyfriend and this should have been you know just lovely and she said something so like yikes like really terrible um about me as a child it was really kind of awful and not called for and i immediately because i felt whoa like this like are you kidding me and then i had to tell myself do not make a story don't make a story this has much more to do with the creature uh, in front of you than you and like just let this go because she's going, you know what I mean? And like whatever time I have with her, I just find again, like this slowing of time, there's an aspect of me, I can see things. There's part, part of me in things, but part of me outside also a little bit helpful and directive. And so I can make better choices in the moment and this is helping me create a relationship with a very difficult mom now with Alzheimer's. It, frankly, I feel like the, the possibilities are so great for how this will end with her, that I'll have memories I would not have had otherwise. Exactly. When it feels, this is so beautiful, when it feels like time is slowing down, what is happening is you are cultivating more presence of the true self. Presence is beyond time and space. When you are seated really in your true self, there's so much presence. You have an awareness that between you and your mother that's sitting across the table at dinner, you, you, you have this ability to look differently at her to see what's going on from a bigger picture perspective, for almost from the bird's eye view, looking in on this, it allows you to, to share with compassion. It allows you to cultivate a, a neutrality. I call it the grand neutrality, where you're allowing her to have her experience and it doesn't have to be enmeshed with your perception of the experience or your perception of you 
that you start to see that what she's saying is revealing her perspective. And you said that with your words where you said, this is not so much about you as it is the creature that's sitting over there and her wrestling with herself and finding herself through whatever means she can. That's what's happening for her. And when we cultivate our own presence, we have the ability to unenmesh and to see ourselves and other as their, our own processes, our own entities. Ultimately, we're all connected at the, at the highest level. But right here, the first way to start the healing process to really awaken to that highest level is to untangle ourselves from those typically in our biological nest, in our original, our, our, our relationships of origin, where we first started establishing who we were. We land here, we splat, we disperse. Our mind, our body, our breath all go in different directions. We clamp on to whatever we can clamp on to to stabilize. So we enmesh with parents and siblings and circumstances uh, just by nature. It's, it's a natural process. And we go along living that way, attached to other, and, and it becomes painful eventually. And so then we eventually let go of that. And that's, that's what we're teaching people how to do faster so that we can get there now instead of it taking the whole lifetime to figure it out. And so as we do so, we unattach from this illusionary world that's enmeshed or entangled, attached to people, places, circumstances, happenings, etc. So we unattach from that and it allows us to drop back in, to gather ourselves back from the splat and feel a sense of self that we never felt before. And it feels so good. It has to feel so good for you to be able to have that distinction. It frees you up to love your mother instead of being upset by what she's doing because she's doing what she's doing on a limited set of circuits based upon the condition that her system is in, which I have to say is oftentimes a byproduct of suppressed feelings over a lifetime lands itself in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and these kinds of degenerative conditions because we've stopped the flow for so long, we're completely out of touch. So we have a hard time being here fully. And when we are here fully, it's a concentrated effort to try to offload those emotions that we never let ourselves feel before. So she's in that state right now. So she opens her mouth and what comes out is not very pleasant, but it isn't personal to you. It's her offloading energies that she was suppressing under her trap door all of her life. So for such a long period of time that she became so out of touch with what she was really feeling, she was out here living the life that she thought she was supposed to until it starts to exhaust the system fatigues. It's not built to do that. When it starts to exhaust, it looks like this person is not here altogether. It looks like they have clacking in their brain where they can't seem to process information anymore, all because we weren't processing it because we weren't allowing ourselves to feel. So her symptoms of her condition are an outpicturing of her attempt to heal way after the fact, late in the game. It's the body is still trying to rise up and open that up. And what comes out is not very pleasant because what was packed in there was misunderstood. It wasn't ever understood. It wasn't ever tapped. It wasn't ever accessed and worked with and massaged and integrated and digested. And so consequently, it's in there as this icky stuff that, you know, comes out with like, how do you say that to somebody? Well, how do you do that? Fortunately, you're doing your work enough to recognize, hey, 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 wait a second. Just because that's going on over here, out here in this outer world, doesn't mean it's about me in this moment. And because I'm finding enough of my true self, I have the wherewithal to sustain that when something comes barreling at me that, that you know, doesn't feel very good. I can make the distinction. This is not about me. We have to build the ability to do that. And that's what I'm trying to teach people how to do rapid fire so that we don't have to spend decades putting the pieces together, that we can start this in motion and then it starts unfolding gracefully now instead of 
50 years from now or 40 years from now when it's been festering in there, creating digestive issues, arthritic issues, degenerative issues, you know, premature aging issues, um, cancers, you name it, you know, that's where they come from. That's the only thing that they're coming from. That's what they're made of. Mm. We have the capacity to shift that. Fascinating. Well, folks, you're listening to Dare to Dream as my gift to you. This is a big segue here. Three months of free business platform. If you would like Thinkific for free, this is where it lets you create, market, sell, and deliver your own online courses. Get the tools to turn your expertise into a money-making career. Go to thnk.cc slash deb to receive your free business platform. All the biz- biggest businesses are using this right now, and it's, it's a remarkable. And if you're just tuning in, I am speaking with Dr. Sue Mortar. I'm Debbie Dashinger. You can get her free ebook called The Top Three Mistakes That Keep You From Fulfillment and Flow. Go to drsuemortar.com slash dare to dream. I want to ask you what else do you have going on? How can people get involved? Because I know you're amongst the many things that you offer. Uh, you have an online course that you're going to be rolling out. I'd love to learn more about that. Uh, yes, absolutely. So the online course is something that actually if someone goes and gets the free ebook, inside that ebook is information on how to get to the course as well. Um, this online course that I'm thrilled about doing online for the first time ever. Is I've been it te- you live interacting? Be live interacting mm-hmm. with people online. Yes, absolutely. Not a pre-recorded thing. Um, so the ebook will take you to a webinar that is a video. And then after that video, I do live Q and a, or you can skip straight to the online course that is follows that, um, as an introduction. If people are trying to learn more about how this works and what it is that I'm doing with people to help them, you know, get their, get better, faster at doing these things that we're speaking about. They can also just go straight to my website. If you already know, it's something that you would be interested in, um, go to, uh, drsuemorder.com and there'll be information there for you. So, so the online course, I'm thrilled. I've been teaching it you know, all across the country for um, a decade and a half, probably 15 years. And this is the very first time that I'm offering it online as my level one to my coursework. And uh, I'm thrilled about it. People are very, very excited uh, about it and are, uh, they've been signing up already and we're, we're still several weeks, you know, a few weeks out um, so there's plenty of time to get engaged in all of that. And the free ebook will, will definitely take you there. That's okay, awesome. folks, again, that was drsuemorder.com slash dare to dream. Get your free ebook. And you can also check out more about this online course. And you, so you had something in the book. Honestly, I was peeing in my pants because this is chapter. It's called Bus Stop Conversations. Yes. Oh, yes. my God. Yes. So it, this is like a joke, a bar joke. I'm going to tell people, but it's, it's from, this is my mind, okay? So <laughs> there's these souls, and they're hanging out at the bus stop, right? And the illusion is they're about to incarnate. So the one soul says to the other, I'm choosing unconditional love. Whoa. So that's what they're going to, the lessons they're going to learn in this next lifetime. The next soul says, I'm choosing to wake up. <laughs> so that's what it's going to learn. And then the, the last soul says, I am choosing the ability to forgive, not just a level three, but a level 10 forgiveness. And I'm sitting there going, oh my God, run, run, <laughs> you poor <laughs> being. <laughs> You're right. gonna, it's going to be like the Groundhog Day of forgiveness yeah. over and over, level 10. Holy moly. So <laughs> here are these souls making these decisions and uh, that's a big decision. I don't even want to know what that life is like, really? Um, but some people, you know, you do look at their lives and you go, wow, like that's a lot. Yeah. You, must, you, you must have had some big agreement coming into this life. So how in the heck do we know what we as souls were saying or over souls were saying at the bus stop? before we chose to come into this lifetime? Is there a pattern we can follow to figure out what our grand lesson for the life is? Yes, so it's been showing up all along. 
there have been repeated experiences that you've had a tendency to find yourself in. There've been trends that you've been creating in your life subconsciously, attracting certain circumstances, finding yourself in similar circumstances over and over. So if you can think, um, uh, if you could answer this sentence like, I tend to find myself in blank situations often. Uh, I'm the one that's taken advantage of, or I tend to be uh, abandoned or left out, or I tend to be, you know, what have you. Just if you've experienced something two, three, four, five times in kind of a biggish kind of way, things that were defining moments in your life, the big impact. Like if I were to say, you know, what are the, what are the biggest experiences that you've had in your life that have, that you wish hadn't happened, that you wish had turned out differently, that you wish had been easier for you when they did happen. Um, and you wrote a list of those things. Uh, then I said, you know, how did they make you feel? How did each of one of those make you feel? You would start to see some common denominators over here in the feeling list. And that's where we start to track on, okay, so I'm regularly having this feeling of inadequacy or this, this abandonment thing or this, you know, uh, um, s abuse thing or people taking advantage of me, something along these lines. So Somewhere at the bus stop, you were looking for um, basically the opposite of that. I want to learn how to be self-empowered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to land in a nest where self-empowerment is not handed to me on a silver platter. And so, so I'm going to struggle to find my way toward self-empowerment. The most important thing is to begin to see the trends that, we're, that we've been creating in our lives, subconsciously creating in our lives. And... And as those trends start to evolve, we know that that's playing a role. And it's basically, if you were to flip it over and find the opposite of that experience, that's what you requested at the bus stop. So then you drop down into here and it's like this giant game of hide and seek. You know, it's like, keep it from me as long as you possibly can, because I'm an old soul and I've been here before. And so I'm going to figure it out. So you have to make it really elusive. And, you know, turns out this is a really great place to get that practice because the hide and seek game is... You know, it's a, it's a real thing. And, and so what I'm teaching people when I get them into the coursework uh, and have a chance to walk them through the whole thing, it's they start to unfold and unpack this, this reality that they've been walking around with blinders on, living inside of their own bus stop conversation, not even knowing it. And as soon as they start to put their finger on it, things start um, changing dramatically because once you're onto it, once you know where they hide, you know how to go find them, right? So, so uh, like the old game of hide and seek when you were a kid, you know, you're playing with your cousins, and you know, little Johnny always hides behind the the woodshed over there, whatever. You can tell I grew up in in the country. Um, so you you know, hide and seek it's your time to go go right behind the woodshed, and there he is, sure enough, because that's where he likes to hide. So, so once we're onto these these patterns, these trends, and these tendencies in our lives, it becomes a game of, of, of adventure rather than taking it all so incredibly personally that it stymies us and, and paralyzes us inside of what feels just to be completely overwhelming and bigger than we are. Oh, I love this. It's sort of like a game of antonyms. So if, if somebody were, and certainly that was a big part of my history was abandonment. So then it means to not abandon myself or oneself right? Yes. If there's the inadequacy that you brought up, it's to feel fully adequate and valuable and worthy inside of oneself. Yes. I, I mean, this is fantastic. Um, I, I want to give you a little funny thing. So at, when I was with you in Indiana at your workshop, <clears throat> my boyfriend who loves all of this stuff, which makes me so happy, was like, how is it? And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> you know, this is so amazing. And he went out and he bought your book, um, got the audio book and started listening, going, oh my God, like this is incredible. Started doing the exercises you have in the book. And so we have a code word now. So anytime something looks like it's going awry, or uh, it's a little tense, like with my mom or something, we have this code word. We just, he, this is what he says to me, he goes, Mulabanda. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> Mulabanda. I know, that's, it's it. You know, when you read the book, you get what this code word is, and in an instant, it changes everything. It brings you back to yourself. It aligns you with your own vertical energy that's supposed to be running through your body all the time. I mean, it is running through your body all the time. And you're supposed to be aware of it. You're supposed to be in there collaborating, cooperating with it. 
and it gets you out of the story. That's what it does. It gets you out of the story. It pulls you, it pulls this thing off of you so that you can see it for what it is instead of it completely controlling your life experience. So that's where it belongs. And Mula Banda gets you there. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a beautiful, beautiful technique. Uh, let's see. So many questions. Um, so little time. Best. You have something called best. My goodness. I'm still fascinated by it. And since my experience with you, I came back to Los Angeles. I found a practitioner here. In fact, I'm going to see her again on Friday. And mm -hmm. I, so I understand energy, but I don't understand it. I just know I walk in and whether I'm working on something or the practitioner is helping me, I'm amazed at some of the words yeah. that they come up with that I would not forever have guessed. Mm -hmm. And the moment I hear it, I know truth. And then I have this very simple, maybe 20 minute session and I walk and I'm like, Wah. I mean, I'm a, I'm puddled completely. I'm in a whole nother healing modality. I feel so great. Oh, excellent. And yeah. So this best, uh, you've got classes that mm -hmm. te can teach us that we can take. So yes. we can also learn to use this as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a hands-on procedure that you do for someone else. And there's also a self-administered version of it that I teach in my regular workshops all the time um, in the, in the coursework. Um, and, and so what it does is it allows the energy that is blocked to start flowing again. We are using a, a series of muscle tests where we're able to literally work with the body and see what was the issue that slammed the trap door shut because it's now subconscious. It was 30 years ago. You can't remember it. You don't know when you're five and you're 10 and you're 15, believe it or not, those are the issues that you're still dealing with. They're not on an emotional level the same, but that energetically it's the same. It's the exact same issue. So we become more sophisticated, but if you break it down, it's still the same issue. And it's been in there haunting us uh, for decades. So what we're doing with bioenergetic synchronization technique, it's called best technique. It's something my father developed beginning in the seventies and continued to refine it uh, through, for his whole life. We were kind of under the radar operating with natural healthcare practitioners around the world since the seventies. And uh, it's a beautiful thing, and we have you know practitioners that have been studying his work and studying my work, and and we can help you find a practitioner in your area that will allow you to experience this. And what it does is it opens a trap door, and it tells you how the trap door got shut, which is that's the mind blowing part that that you're talking about uh, is that it is um, it is subconscious. That's why you say I would never in a million years thought that would have been the word I needed to forgive or I needed to work with or I needed to embrace. It's because your conscious mind would never come up with that. Your logical, rational, conscious mind wouldn't come up with it. But that's the issue. We're run by our subconscious. Our subconscious keeps our heart beating, keeps us digesting lunch, keeps our blood chemistries proper, keeps our thyroid running, etc. It's our subconscious. It's not our conscious mind. Our conscious mind can have an influence on it, but you'd have to focus on it 100% of the time, and you could never focus on all of it enough to stay alive for 24 hours. You couldn't do it. So we have this beautiful mechanism that keeps us subconsciously alive. And those, those emotions that are being suppressed into those feelings we're talking about, they're being suppressed into the subconscious are bogging down the system to the point that it can't do what it's designed to be doing. So what we're doing in this session is you lay down and we read the body and we can tell what pattern you got locked up in. Like anger creates a certain pattern in the body. Fear creates a different pattern. Frustration, abandonment, they all have their own uh, influence on us energetically. And so we're reading the pattern of effect, working backwards and telling you where it came from. You think of the word and it short circuits you and we know we're onto it. Then we hold some points that act like jumper cables basically to reestablish the proper communication in the brain, basically saying, yes, that happened. And it's not still happening. It turns out it was 30 years ago. Let go. It opens up. We get a synchronization happening in the flow of this pulsation, this universal pulse that's supposed to be everywhere in your body equally. It gets shut down where the pulse is rapid or, or f f real feeble and, and even, you know, um, even in, in perceivable. And, and then we get them connected up again and pulsating in a synchronized fashion. And it allows the body to start jumping. It's like a jump start. Uh, into rejuvenation, healing, filtering, cleansing again, like it was supposed to be doing all along. So we let the body tell us 
what to tell you got in the way that slammed the trap door shut. It's really fascinating work. I want to do this because I feel for what I do with people around voice and visibility, that when I'm doing my three-day events, I mean, because I'm all about healing inside and outside. It's not just the technique. But this is something I can use once I learn it to facilitate people further. Yes. So, yes, exactly. It's a beautiful modality. And, um, and it, if someone wants to learn how to do that, they should write to info at .com, uh that you're interested in learning how to do the hands-on work called BEST, capital letters, BEST, um, it, because right now we don't have a listing of the next date of our seminar on the website. I don't think it's up yet, but we'll, we can let you know as soon as it is. But now, and check our calendar of events. It might be on there for, 2000, for 2020. You can look and see if it's there. I'm not sure if it's up yet. But, but either way, if you, if you info at drsuemorder.com, we can be sure and contact you directly as soon as we know the dates and, and give you more information about it. So. Happy Dr. To. Sue, do you have your shirts made for you? You have the most beautiful gemstone blouses. They fit you so beautifully. I, 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 I'm so curious. To, is this a style and you have them made for you somewhere? Yes, I, I have them made for me. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Yeah. We, it's, um, I, I started out with a, with a woman here in town who was a patient of mine who, who wanted to, um, you know, do something for me. And so, so I, she was a, she's a, a, a couture seamstress, a, a wonderful couture seamstress who makes wedding dresses and things for people. And so I, um, she made me one and, you know, I loved it. So she's just been, you know, uh, doing that in exchange for healthcare and coming to the coursework. And it's a beautiful, uh, a beautiful collaboration. And, and, what she feels is a contribution to, you know, what we're doing by uh, going out into the world and, and helping teach and share and, and uh, apparently impress people with the colors. That we're <laughs> because I love beauty. I really do. I love beauty and coherence and when energy yeah. is complimentary. So kudos to her. It's just, yes. they're phenomenal, really. Thank and you. so again, we've got drsuemortar.com slash dare to dream. Anything you'd like to say, here at the end? Oh, wow. You know, there's always so much. And the bottom line is there is nothing broken, there is nothing missing, and there is nothing wrong with you in any way, if anyone. And all we have to do is learn how to radically accept ourselves. Every single emotion that we have, including anger and rage or frustration or fear, anxiety, depression, all of it is, is serving something. It's a part of you that needs to be embraced. And this is what I love to show people how to do because when they embrace the very thing that they've been trying to outrun or suppress or get away from, they find out that they truly are a, a magnificent individual and they become capable of turning around and helping other people to find the exact same thing is true for them. And that's the world that we should be living in. So it's my pleasure to be of service to that in every way that I can be. And in the meantime, until I ever get to meet you or until you get to the ebook and do that kind of thing, just know that this universe is in your favor, that there is only ever one thing happening here and it is good and it is you for you. Mm, thank you so much for coming My back. Thank you, Debbie. Yeah. Pleasure. You're amazing. You're amazing. Really. Thank you so much for doing what you do. I, I'm happy to come back anytime and have another conversation and, and, and talk about some of the other things that, that uh, we can certainly talk about. There is so much to cover. Uh, we care. We shall. Then we shall. I have more, more and more questions, and this is an ongoing conversation and brilliance. And I'm, I'm so deeply grateful. My so pleasure. thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. And I end today's show with this quote from Paracelsus, which is the art of healing comes from nature, not from the physician. Therefore, the physician must start from nature with an open mind. If you'd like to be part of the Dare to Dream team, go ahead, please, and donate some money, $1, cup of coffee, and more. We're grateful for it all. Go to patreon.com slash dare to dream to donate there and be part of this podcast. Next week, I'm featuring Lana Nelson. She's a nutritional 
intuitive, and she's going to share the food codes with us. Tune in to this number one transformation conversation on Dare to Dream. Remember, you can subscribe to the YouTube videos at youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. And I must say, I, aside from the secret of success is having the courage to begin in the first place, perhaps even more important is that the universe is always conspiring for you. Mm.